and welcome to my podcast. Um, this is the Grey Autumn Rain Knitting and Other Yarn podcast. Um, a podcast, obviously, about knitting and crocheting and what other, whatever other yarn crafts or other crafts I happen to be doing at the moment. Um, as I said, my name is Elizabeth. Uh, I'm coming to you from Somerville, Massachusetts. I am Grey Autumn Rain on Instagram and Ravelry and that is why I'm calling it the Grey Autumn Rain Knitting Podcast. It's just a handle I've been using on the internet for a while and it happens to be my favorite type of time of year to knit when it's you know gray and fall and rainy outside and you're all curled up nice on you know nice and cozy on the couch with a mug of tea and you're knitting or crocheting or whatever you happen to be working on. So I'm going to start off this podcast with a segment I'm going to call A Tale of Two Needles or why you should order your needles from places that specialize in yarn and needles and that stuff. Um, so back in December, at the, right after Christmas, I decided to treat myself um, to one of those new nine inch uh, circular sock needles I've been hearing about on various other podcasts that I like. So I'm a DPNs girl. I knit all my socks on DPNs. Um, I like DPNs. Um, I've tried Magic Loop. It's not for me. Um, but, you know, I thought that the 9 inch circulars would probably be great because I love knitting other stuff on circulars in the round. Um, so I thought I'd try it. And I didn't want to put in a whole big yarn order where I would, you know, have to spend $50 to get free with free shipping and blah, blah, blah. And Knit Picks doesn't have any um, right now <laughs> that are nine inch circles. And I really want to try the Chagu ones because I heard that they were a bit longer than um, the high highs and it sounded like the, the better bet for me. So I went on Amazon and yeah, you know, I've got a Prime membership. I've ordered a pair from the seller and got them shipped to me. And what arrived? Here. It says it's a nine inch needle, but they're lying. I mean, take a look at that. Is that a nine inch sock needle? Dear knitters, you, you can, no, 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 no. That's, that's a 30 inch lace needle. <laughs> I mean, I haven't taken it out of the package and measured it, but it's a 30 inch lace needle in size one, um, which, you know, I was disappointed by because it's not what I ordered and I already have two other 30 inch cable size one circular needles. I didn't need another one. Um, so I tried to send it back and Amazon has a way for you to do that. But then I was betrayed by the UPS guy. UPS was supposed to come and pick it up. They didn't. Um, the guy came to the door, apparently, left a note on my door without bothering to ring the doorbell or anything like that, and left. Um, I have this problem with UPS. There's, like, the good driver and the bad driver. Like, there was the the bad driver who um, claimed that the business was not open when he tried to deliver a package from Fabric.com. Um, and I'm like, sorry, it's a house, not a business. It's $50 worth of fabric. Leave it on the porch. Um, you know, and you know, the guy who, you know, who never rings, and I, I suspect it's the same guy never rings the doorbell for anything that needs a, a signature from, and there's the other guy who actually does his job confidently. So having failed to get UPS to pick it up, I tried going to the UPS store, but then they wouldn't take it because I didn't have the right paperwork. And I was like, okay, well I can come back after having gone home and printed off the right paperwork and I never got around to it in time to actually get the refund from Amazon. So now I'm stuck with a lace needle that I will probably eventually use. I'm sure it's a perfectly good lace needle, but it's not what I wanted. So if you're buying knitting supplies from sellers on Amazon, especially, I don't think it was Amazon, it was somebody else who was reselling through your site. Caveat emptor, big time. All right, so that was needle number one. Now, needle number two has a happier story. Um, 
I've been knitting my socks on size one needles and I've noticed that they were a little bit looser and I think that's partly my gauge loosening up. I'm an incredibly loose knitter um, and partly I think it was the Nipix needles were a little bit, you know, just a hair thicker than the um, Crystal Palace needles that I, I quit using because I broke one. <laughs> um, you know, I, I break needles um, occasionally. I don't usually have a lot of tension, but you know, things happen, things were out, it happens. Um, so I tried casting on with my brand new that I just bought, thinking that I might want a set of size zeros. Uh, size zeros, that's a two millimeter needles for those of you who don't use um, US sizing. But anyway, this came from Knit Picks, and I tried casting on, and this DPN just, it just separated. I don't know if you can see that. Can you? It just separated along the, the lines of the wood. And I contacted Knit Picks through their website, and I heard back like the next day. And they said, oh, just throw it out. We'll send you a new set. And I was like, thank you. Um, because I, you know, I'm, I will replace my own needles if I, if I break them and it's clearly my fault. Like if I, you know, if I lose them down the couch cushions, if the, you know, the kids sit on them and they snap, if, you know, it's the, you know, if it's the 300th thing I've done on those, that's other needles or, you know, the 30th. And they're clearly just, you know, wearing out from overuse. Then, you know, I'll just go and replace it. I won't ask for a free one, but. Um, the picks immediately sent me out a new, you know, a new set to replace to replace the uh, the whole set of DPNs, even though it was just one DPN that was broken. And I was so glad they did that because I will eventually break one of the other needles or lose one down the couch cushion or you know uh, leave it somewhere. It'll floor, you know, fall on the floor and roll away and get stepped on. Things happen to my needles. <laughs> Not that often. I'm pretty careful. But, you know, I have three small kids and I knit a lot. And I take my knitting with me everywhere. So I will eventually, there will be attrition. That's what I'm saying. All right. So I should get in, I should slow down. My clock will keep messing again. I can slow down. Get into finished objects. All right, the first finished object I have was a half object last time. Mm, that's a fair size. Um, I'm knitting socks for my kids again. I'm gonna basically keep them for a while and then put them into rotation at some time. Possib possibly not till Christmas. Um, but we'll see how their other socks hold up. Anyway, these are, um, Little pumpkins. Well, they were the little pumpkin socks by Sabine Rupert, but I did one repeat of the actual little pumpkins pattern, and then I just wasn't feeling it, so I just knit in sort of the established rib pattern for the rest of the sock. Um, yeah, I did repeat it on the other on the other socks, so they match. Um, but it makes a perfectly nice sock, and it's a it's a nice little detail up there. But I. I had too many other cable projects at the same time to be feeling it for for an entire knee-high sock for Mr. Always Wants Knee-High Socks. Yes, these are for Duncan. Um, they're in the pumpkin colorway of Stroll by Knit Picks. They're sock, you know, they're basic sock yarn, um, which I bought back when his favorite color was orange, but now it's purple. But I think he still likes orange enough that he is going to get these socks. So. That's finished object number one. So my second finished object was also a half object last time I spoke to you three weeks ago. Let's see what today is. Today is uh, February 15th. It's a Thursday. Um, so it's, it's been three weeks. So I've got a number of finished objects. Um, and it's these. These are the Bracken Fingerless Gloves by uh, Kalula Hudson. Um, and I did alter this pattern. It was real. I don't know why she calls them fingerless gloves because they were originally just mitts. Um, and I altered it so they'd have separate fingers. That's what my boys wanted. 
Um, these are for Martin. This is the Barocco Ultra Wool, what he bought me for Christmas. And they both wanted fingerless gloves. Well, Duncan wanted fingerless gloves. Um, Martin, I think, just picked that because Duncan picked it. Um, so these are Martin's, and I, yeah, I altered the fingers, and I made the cuffs extra long because I believe that mitten cuffs can never be too long. <laughs> I mean, unless they come over your elbow, um, but there's that, that gap between the, you don't want that gap between the, the coat and the mitten. You want some overlap there. So when it's windy, it doesn't make your entire arm cold. So yeah, um, I cannot show you Duncan's pair. Duncan's pair is also finished. They look exactly the same, except they're purple. Um, but the reason that I cannot show them to you is because I cannot get them off his hands. Duncan is very knit worthy. Um, and he's been wearing, he's been wearing his version of these, his purple fingerless gloves since I finished them. Um, so they're, they're off at school with Duncan right now. He's, he's probably wearing them in the classroom as we speak. <laughs> um, but that's why he gets hand knits because when the kids appreciate them, they get more. <laughs> so, um, all right. So another finished object, which wasn't even started last time. So that's what happens when it's, I go three weeks between podcasts. <gasps> I made another pair of socks. These are Hermione everyday socks. Again, they're for Margaret. Um, they're going to go into uh, some stash of socks. I guess I'm kind of doing a box of socks, but um, for the kids, <laughs> for maybe you know, maybe for Christmas or or, or what have you. Um, and I've done I've done her Hermione everyday socks before. I've done them in this particular colorway. This is Felici, it's the uh, Spring Blooms colorway. But this time I decided to pair it with this um, high tea, scroll tunnel uh, for heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, and I think that it's it's not an exact match for the, the future pop in there, but I think it's, it's close enough to really play up that um, and make them a more, more pink. So they're good for my, my, my little girly girl who loves pink and purple, but especially pink, and especially this, this kind of hot pink color. So yes, yet another version of the Hermione Everyday Socks by Erica Luder. If you, unless you've been living under a sock knitting rock, you know this pattern. <laughs> it's popular for a reason. All right, um, so my last finished object is another thing I hadn't ca even cast on last time. And it's the elephant around my neck. <laughs> this is the Stormy Sky Shawl um, by Life is Cozy. And this is the Malabrigo sock yarn that Margaret got me for Christmas. And the pattern she picked out to go with it. Um, let me see if I can get up. Oh. Why? It's gorgeous. I love it. Um. I used every last bit of yarn for this one. Yep, you know, the little ends, the yeah, were made with the, the tassels I made at, of the yarn I had left over after I cast off, which I did after I realized I was weighing my yarn and I, I, I knew I wouldn't have enough for another repeat. And yeah, I've seen these, uh, I've seen this sort of stitch before. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the elongated stitches, and I was like, oh, hmm. yeah, I, I, it never really appealed to me. And I did it. It's so much fun, guys. You know, I never would have done that stitch if Margaret hadn't picked out the shawl for me. It's so much fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a nice pick. And this this thing is the uh, Malabrigo sock is a very is definitely a light fingering. Um, and I usually, I usually go for heavier fingerings, you know, the thing, the kind of fingerings that, you know, border on support weight. Um, but this is just a little, it's, it, it's, it's nothing. It weighs, it's, it's, you know, it's just a little bit of, it's just a little bit of shawl. It's a, it's, it's a perfect summer shawl. Why are you wearing a summer shawl in February in New England, Elizabeth? Why? 
it's warm out today. Oh my goodness. Um, I guess my, my sister who lives in, uh, in San Diego wouldn't consider it warm. It's, uh, it's, it's, I think our high today is supposed to be 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 Celsius for those of you who do metric. Um, but yeah, for February in, in New England, that is super warm. So my uh, computer keeps reminding me because I, I see pictures on my screensaver from three years ago. Three years ago was the year we had nine feet of snow in four weeks around this time of year. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no snow on the ground and well above freezing is is positively spring-like here. So I'm wearing my new shawl that I just finished. And this is one of my projects for the Ravelenic Games. Um, they used to be called the Rav Olympics, but then the actual Olympic Committee got a bee in their bonnet about that. You can't call anything that you call it that. It's too, too close to the Olympic. I, I don't know why. I mean, the whole point behind the Rav Olympics, or the Rav Olympics as they're now called, was people would cast things on, you know, during the opening ceremony of the Olympics, and then they, you know, they they'd see what they challenge themselves to see what they could knit. While watching the Olympics on TV, it was, you know, clearly sort of promoting the actual Olympics and not trying to pretend to be the Olympics instead. And so I don't usually participate in those because I, it kind of, that bureaucratic thing from the, uh, the actual IOC sort of bit me the wrong way. But uh, I'm part of this group on um, on Ravelry that's that is you know fielding a team so I'm just because I love that group it's my due date group from from when I was pregnant with Martin it, it was this wonderful wonderful group of women um, who just you know who are all having babies in August of 2012 and the fact that we're still actually a group speaks to uh, you know just what how just how well we gelled and what wonderful women are in this group. Uh, one of them is the little dyer behind Neely's Knits too, by the way. Super cool for those of you who love indie dyed yarn. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm, I'm participating just because I want to support my, my, my girls, my, uh, my fellow, fellow August 2012 mamas who are just this awesome, awesome group. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, Right. Works in progress. I've got a few, not too many, but I've got a few. Because so I just finished this one. This was a work in progress from the you know for a while there, but now it's, it's it, it flew off the needles. And by the way, Margaret's pick for the Stormy Sky shawl from Life Is Cozy. Yeah, not something I would normally have done, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad. All right, I've got another half object another sock. And this is for Martin, obviously. And it looks a lot like one of the ones I made him for uh, yeah. Barely fits. It's a little it barely fits on the uh, sock blocker. But it's uh it's the steamer trunk Felici colorway. Uh, and this time it's it's a you know with red you know contrast cuff and heel um in the heartfelt stroll tonal colorway. Um, I done him a different pair like for, for Christmas that was near identical. I just used Holly Berry as the, the red and I liked it so much. I said, I gotta knit him another pair of pair that's like these. And this is what this is what I needed the size yarn needles for because I was unhappy with how loose my, my gauge was on the on the size one. Size one is 2.25 millimeters, size zero is two millimeters for those of you who do metric which really we should too. I, I should train myself to just say the metric sizes. So that's a work in progress. And here's its mate because I don't get second sock syndrome. I'm, I'm the super virtuous knitter who, <laughs> who always knits your second sock right away. And it, it's because I'm a, I'm definitely a project knitter and I, I need to be done. Um, so there we go. We've got half object, and most of the cuff <laughs> of the second sock. But yes, oh, and um, right, the pattern. Um, the pattern is the, 
is the ever popular um, vanilla latte powder, which is a free powder on Ravelry um, by Victoria Rose Jeans, I think it is. Vanilla latte. It, unless you've been hiding under a sock knitting rock, you'd, you've seen this pattern before. But the heel, oh, let me talk about the heel. The heel on all my socks now is um, the Double Gusset Heel by Christy Payne, which is another free pattern on Ravelry. I love this heel so much. Look, it, it, it's, it's, it's shaped like the bottom of your foot. You have high arches, like I do, and my kids do. It's, you know, you get the little whoop thing where, you know. I love this heel so much. Thank you, Christy Payne, um, who is like, I think she's, you know, she's Turtle Girl or something on Ravelry. Um, I've seen her around Ravelry since the early days. Um, you know, I got in on Ravelry when it was, when it was brand new. Um, as when, when there was a waiting list. I had, I had to be on the waiting list. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for the, this, this heel pattern. I love it so much. It's, it's the heel that is just right for me. And that's looking in my little jeweler bag. She doesn't make bags anymore. It's a tragedy. But I have, I need bigger bags anyway. Because I'm making sweaters again. This, it's definitely going to be my own design. I've, it's, this one's feeling like obligation knitting because, because uh, my husband Warren bought the yarn off eBay. And so I haven't been making very much progress on it because it's been feeling like obligation knitting. There we go. Um, this, this little progress marker down here, that's where I was last time, three weeks ago. So I, you yeah, know, I've been making progress. But yeah, it's a, uh, got the v-neck and the sleeves are on scrap yarn. And I, I'm really most of the way done with the body and the, the sleeves will be, the sleeves won't be too, too bad. And then I'll just have to pick up my original cast on and do the ribbing around the neck. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased with this. Um, this is, this is a, uh, it's a, it's yarn he bought off of eBay. It's a uh, cashmere silk blend. Um, so I was concerned about how drapey it would be. Um, and how much it might grow and stuff like that. And cashmere is super soft. He wanted he wanted the kids to have cashmere sweaters because cashmere is super warm. And the, the cashmere and silk combination is fabulous. But um, I don't think when I publish a pattern that this will be the recommended yarn for it. A because you know it's really not that available. You know, yarn that you buy off of eBay is generally not. Um, and, and B because I'm. I think the pattern is going to be better in a, a different type of yarn, um, a type of yarn that is, shall we say, a bit more robust. And that's where I'll get my next work in progress, which is the same pattern, but I'm doing it in my size. Yeah, I haven't even finished the first one, and I'm doing another copy because I'm crazy. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the way I am. All right. So this is my version, and this, this is a faded, this is a faded version, or, you know, blended, or whatever. There's the, the nice cable pattern on the back, and it's got the, the v-neck front with the same cable pattern. Okay. And I can show this because my, my following is so tiny, so tiny, I'm, nobody's gonna, now, if you're one of the very few people who watches my podcast, and you can like, you know, scoop me on this design. More power to you. <laughs> Seriously. Um, but I'm doing this in the Hawthorne that I have left over from the kids' sweaters I made. I made, um, I used the Nipix Hawthorne speckle to make each of the kids a different flax light, uh, and a flax light sweater that I'd hacked to have, you know, a very similar cable pattern on the, uh, on the arms instead of the uh, instead of the uh, garter panel that the tin can knits pattern calls for, um, and I thought, well, yeah, you know, I had um, a little over a skein left of Martin's color, which is the confetti, and a little under a skein of Duncan's color, which is the Jupiter, um, and a little under a skein of 
Margaret's color, which I don't have with me right now, which is the Andromeda. It's a pink speckle. And then I'd gotten this color. This is the Cosmic Speckle at uh, in Nitpick's huge sale. And I thought, oh yeah, it's, you know, I can, the reason I, the way I justified that purchase was, oh, yeah, if I have that color, then I can fade, you know, in some sort of sweater, all the kids' colors, you know, together into, you know, into a sweater for, for me. So that's what I'm doing. So I've got Martin up top here with the confetti. It fades pretty well, I think, into the the Jupiter, which is the uh, the orange and purple. And then I'm fading it down into the cosmic down here. You can kind of you can pretty see, you see it's it's definitely a bit of a little more abrupt transition um, because the cosmic is much bluer. But then it'll it'll work okay because the uh, it's got the same sort of cobalt blue in the Andromeda, which is very pink, very very pink. Um, so I think it'll be a, a good fade. So I'm making that for myself. So I'll have uh, I'll have matching, you know, I'll have this sweater that matches the yarn from the, the flex lights I made the kids and the pattern, you know, I'll, and at the same time I'll test out my my pattern that I'm going to try and publish um, in in an adult size because you know I'm not an established designer. I don't have a pool of you know test you know test knitters. So I want to do it a few times myself before, <laughs> before I uh, dare charge anybody actual money for that. All right. So that's works in progress. So it must be time for stash placement. And I got the next installment of my yarn from Vivid Yarn Studio Club. All right. If you're... Uh, you don't want to be spoiled, look away now. Look at that. Oh, it is so beautiful. It's called Crazy for You. It's definitely the Valentine theme. And she sent it along with a tea bag. And a little heart progress uh, um, yeah, stitch marker. It's so cute. She is vivid. And this was my husband's Christmas gift to me. Three months of her, her club, and it's in Worcester Merino. I was like, well, I can make hats, but I wanted before I did anything with the previous skein. Here, I can bring up the January skein. I said, I think I'll see how they play well together. And I was originally thinking maybe a palette sweater or something with stripes, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking they need to be. I think they need to be faded together. I think this is going to be a cardigan for me. But well, I won't make any firm decisions until I see the third month, and I might, I might have to buy more months of her club, just to get enough worsted weight to, uh, to make an entire sweater, because it usually takes um, at least four skeins of worsted weight, usually more like five or six to be safe. Um, so I might have to get another three months for her club. <laughs> Justification. Um, but don't, don't you think that would look beautiful together? I mean, yeah, and I'm, I'm betting March is going to be similar, but probably like more green, or something like that. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I think they'll, uh, yeah, I think they'll, they'll, fed, they'll fade together nicely because they're similar, but not the same. I, I love them. Thank you. Super spouse points to the husband. Definitely. That was a great gift. All right, and I have I have a non-yarn stash acquisition. Non-yarn, non-needle. I got more fabric. Who am I? I'm, I'm suddenly I'm a sewist. Um, but there was this fabric on fabric.com that I had my eye on, but it was pricey, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm really gonna, you know, be happy with it the pattern and the you know and my sewing skills and stuff like that and yeah I made myself a dress Margaret a dress and they're not the best dresses in the world but my goodness I'm so happy with mine and Margaret's so happy with hers it's you know because the, it's the dress is what I wanted it's you know it fits me well it's the right length it's you know 
it's full, the sleeves are long enough. I'm yeah, it's not three quarter sleeves, but I want three quarter sleeves. It's 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 got pockets. You know, it's a you know, it's a few minor imperfections. Big deal. Yeah, you know, it's still my favorite dress to wear. So I had my eye on this fabric that was like 17 bucks a yard because it was like, you know, was, you know, like 95% cotton, 5% spandex, knit jersey, and, and it was, you know, in a, a really nice print. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll keep my eye on it. I, you know, I kept my eye on it and it was starting to get low. And when it got below 30 yards left, I was like, okay, I got to I've got to buy it now. Of course, then they restocked it. <laughs> And when the, the, the amount of yards left went, went up to like 70 some odd, but I'm still happy. So this is going to be a dress for me. Look at it. It's owls and flowers on trees and other birds. And... What can I say? I'm a sucker for a good woodland print. And it's, it's definitely my colors. It's, you know, this nice taupey gray. Um, with little sort of hints of pastels and and, and owls. It's got owls. <laughs> Very sort of Harry Potter with the, the snowy owls. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I'm going to have another dress at some point. I'm not going to make it today. I'm not going to make it tomorrow. But I might use some of the leftover I have from the previous bunch to make Margaret a dress today. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into sewing. And now I know that I need to sort of slow down with my sewing and allow myself to, you know, to just do a small amount and then, you know, clean up the stuff and say, that's it. You know, I'm not going to do any more. I think my sewing will improve once I sort of give myself permission to do it in just small chunks, even though it's going to be a bit more of a pain with the setup and breakdown. But there are things I can do to ameliorate that and I've got some ideas for what I want to do for Margaret and she loves her dress she wears it every time it's clean so yeah so I'm, I'm not just about yarn anymore I'm about fabric too all right well that's it for me so um thank you for bearing with me and uh Hopefully I'll see you again in a couple of weeks.